Well, may I make a shameless bid that if Parliament is going to decant, it decants to Birmingham. But will my honourable friend confirm? Why not? It's our second city. Fabricant. Well, Mr Speaker, if there have been improvements, most of my constituents haven't really noticed them. They've been stranded at Four Oak, and believe me, Mr Speaker, you wouldn't want to be stranded in Four Oak, hanging around for an hour and a half, waiting for another London Midland train to take them back to Lichfield. Uh, how bad does it actually have to get before the Minister decides to take away the service and re-advertise the contract. Mr Speaker, I can't think of anyone less like a chocolate teapot than my right honourable friend, the Secretary of State for Transport. Could I invite you to prepare a booklet of possibly various items of intemperate language which you might think, such as chocolate teapots, might be inappropriate in this House? The honourable member. Uh, uh, f the whip for the government may have uh, a, a pet animal, a cat or a dog. I'm not sure whether he does. He, a llama. He has a llama. Uh, I, did, I did not know that, Mr Deputy Speaker. I'm not sure I needed to know it either. But Might I be allowed to bring you an apple? <laughs> no. The conventions of the House, as he well knows, means we're not allowed either to take presents or... Eat. Despite Sir Robert having studied Anglo-Saxon at Oxford and being told at least at once in front of others to F-U-C-K off by you, Mr Speaker, well, I wouldn't want to accuse my honourable friend, and he is a friend of being smug, but what about the 3%? And can I say how utterly frustrating it is to hear about superfast broadband when parts of my constituency, like Tatenhill and others in the United Kingdom, have virtually no broadband at all? Some years ago, I was shunted up my rear end and uh, by a car on the M1, Mr Speaker. Five years ago, I started nagging my right honourable friend about money required to maintain the fabric of Litchfield Cathedral, and I don't intend his retirement to stop me now. My honourable friend share my fear that with an air traffic controller strike in France at the moment, uh -huh. transport workers on strike at the moment, yeah. massive unemployment in France yeah. due to their socialist republic, yeah. with all these people coming over here we could end up with a French speaking mayor. At the risk of boring you, uh, Mr Speaker, in 1992 I raised this. Uh, I raised it in Prime Minister's questions with Tony Blair, who was very sympathetic but did nothing as well. And then in the last Parliament, I raised it and was told it was the wicked Liberals and David Laws who blocked it. Well, we're in government now, so what are we going to do and when will it happen? He considered exotic, but he is never considered boring. In the mid-90s, I stood up in this chamber and said that someday there will be self-drive cars, and they all thought I was mad. <laughs> and, but I'm reliably, I am reliably told that by 2020, autonomous drive cars will be available in the United Kingdom and elsewhere. And so what can my right honourable friend do to try and get milk being consumed even more, I'm a great lover of it, but particularly government departments buying milk? That's why I've got good teeth. That uh, the member for Plymouth, who's not here, and I share a love of hedgehogs. We really do. I remember once, Mr Speaker, years ago, bringing a hedgehog into the chamber, which was completely out of order. But anyway, but may I say that the... <laughs> no, not in your time. It was the noble, noble baroness uh, who uh, did not approve, I can well say. It actually did something terrible in my hand and I dropped it and it scurried off. But it would sometimes be embarrassing going with Gerald because if the weather was cold, he would wear a red tea cosy on his head. And when I told him about this, he said, well, he's not half as embarrassed about what I'm wearing. But anyway... <laughs> Unless I misheard him, the Honourable Gentleman chunted from a sedentary position, Twitter was against his hair. Yes. And can I just say to you, Mr Speaker, to make it absolutely clear, I will not be appearing on Naked Attraction. <laughs> the President of the United States has called out the UN Human Rights Council for what they are, a bunch of corrupt, nasty hypocrites. He has withdrawn from that council 
Why don't we save $4 million a year by doing just the same? Now, colleagues may be relieved to learn that this bill is all bark and no Brexit. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah, going to be a change. Yeah, 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 yeah. As any member of this House who has watched my recent videos on YouTube explaining parliamentary committees will know, I'm a tree hugger. Yeah, and yeah. I'm proud of it. That's why I'm a member of the All Party Parliamentary Group for Ancient Woodlands and Veteran Trees, so ably led by my honourable friend, the member for Taunton Dean, because I'm fighting to save them, all of them. While welcoming the decision of the British government to proscribe Hezbollah, does my right honourable friend care to consider the distinction between Iran, which is using its rocket technology to produce ballistic missiles, and Israel, which will shortly be landing a scientific explorer on the moon? And I wasn't going to actually intervene in this debate because I'm in my pink and no tie mode, but hey, we're a modern parliament. But both these men are overworked, Mr. Speaker. Now, my right honourable friend, indeed the whole House will be aware that 1,200 years ago, Archbishop Hichbert was the Archbishop of Lichfield. It seems to me, Mr. Speaker, that you could have a future role in your retirement as the Archbishop for Litchfield. No, Litchfield, Litchfield. We want him in Litchfield. And then the hard work done by the Archbishop of Canterbury and York can be shared. We have that precedent. We want him now.